Hello there. I've just come up to the Langley Valley. I've just, uh, well, I was going to go up to Langley Crags, but if you look up on the hills, it's quite misty. There's a bit of rain forecast later. So I think I haven't really explored it much, but I'm going to go up the Carey Burn. I'm going to go up by the side of this stream, have a chilled out camp. It's Friday afternoon, four o'clock. Just uh, fancied something nice and easy. I didn't fancy driving up the single track roads too much so I've just parked here and uh, see where it takes me so I'll see in a bit. This is the start of the, the Carey Burn walk. Beautiful views. Let's have a little look at the river. There's the river. Why don't we go down here? And we'll have a little look upstream. Let's see what we're going to be walking by. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful walk. So I'll, uh, well, I'm going to have a walk up the valley and I'll come back. Just come on a nice smooth path now. Still very misty up on the tops, so it's probably a good call to do a, a valley walk. Explore somewhere I've not really explored much before. What a lovely meandering walk up the side of the stream. There's some nice little pools for the small trout. What I might do is sort out some of my fly gear and instead of bringing a fly rod of which there's no room to cast it anyway on these little streams why don't I get one of my fresh water whips out if you don't know a whip is like a, a roach pole but without the elastic and it's just got a flick tip on the end I could just attach a bit of fly line to the end of that and it's called dapping I could dap a fly in these little pools. Be just something to pass the afternoon. Beautiful. I think I'm going to try that. I'll get the stuff sorted out. Nice little ravine and crack to climb up there. There's some cracking pools down there for the trout. Looks like we've got some nice waterfalls coming up as well. Cracking view. Here we are in one of the pools now. Lovely deep water in there. And look at that. Fabulous. I wouldn't say this is a walk for the... Uh... Well, it's not a walk for people who's not good on the feet because there's lots of scree paths and there's lots of ups and downs. But it's well worth the effort. As far as the achievements go, it's an easy path. If it was nice and quiet later in the year, look at that. A perfect bit of woodland for the hammock. You could come late and leave early. Sit the hammock up in there. Fabulous. Or even your bivvy. You've got to think to yourself, bat battling through this lot, chest high bracken, how many ticks you're going to get on you, because there's lots of sheep. But uh, I'll just keep checking myself. It's proving quite a hot walk. I've got a couple of litres of water in the hydration bladder, and I've got another two litres, so. We pack last week, we talked about 9.3 kilos. I'm up to 12.8 today. Because I've got a frying pan, a bit of food, two extra litres of water. And I've also bought me a bigger tarp as well. My DD super light tarp, so that's 2.8 by 3. That's, I don't know how heavy that is, about 400 grams or something. But 400 grams there, a couple of extra litres of water, frying pan, plate bit of food, you know, a couple of kilos, it soon adds up. 
It's quite close as well. So I'm sweating now. But I think it's so overgrown. I'm going to walk to the end of this wood and I'm going to pick a path and I'm going to go right up onto the top of one of the hills. I know there's a lot of mist, but there'll be some views. Now I know we've just passed Watch Hill. I didn't take the path that skirts around the back of that one. So my next path on the right, I'm not sure. Fredden Hill or something like that. I'll consult my map and then decide what to do. Water sounds lovely. Not a nice little footbridge here, look. Nice footbridge. What a lovely walk. I suppose some people did the videos when you walk past the camera, but to be honest, in the heat it's a mugs game. It's nice for the videos, but it's hard work. Beautiful, isn't it? Just on a little climb now up. It's quite uh, sweaty on the back end with an aerated back on the rucksack. Seems to be clearing up a bit. Turns out that's Watch Hill over there and Fredden Hill is to the rear of it. This is Great Moor this way and the little hill I was going to walk up. It's just got 353 on the map. It doesn't have a name but we'll see when I get there. This little oak woodland here. This is what that little woodland I've been using by the house is going to turn out like. But that's only got like 20 foot trees at the minute. And I suppose this is another five, six years on. Lovely. So there'll be plenty of light in that little wood. I must go back there and have another camp. Maybe a midweek one. I love these little broadleaf woodlands. Much better than the pine, because you've got life. So in that little pocket of trees up there, that's called Broad Struther. I don't know whether it's a hunting lodge, a private lodge, or what it is, holy home. But behind it is, is Great Hill. And uh, I'll check the map for these others. But you can see the mists up there. Now the hill I'm going to go up is the one on the right hand side up here. Should be a path at the end of here. It's been a tough old walk considering it's meant to be easy. I suppose carrying 12 kilos it's never easy is it? But uh, nice bit of breeze now up here. Look you can see the mist on the hills. It's a fabulous place to achieve it. I've seen nobody. Where I parked at Carey Bridge there was four cars but I haven't seen a soul. There's all these nice pockets of trees. There's one up there, look past the footbridge. There's Broad Struther. There's a pocket of trees up there. And they're all on streams. Fabulous places to camp. I've never really explored this side of the hills. So that's Great Moor up there. That's Preston Hill. I don't know about this one. Scold Hill's got to be over that way, hasn't it? But. Uh, I'll have a look when I'm on the top. It'd be interesting to pull them up out and have a look. I'd like to come back and explore this. I mean, look at that little bit of woodland up there. It looks very lush and green in there, doesn't it? Lovely. It's like Scold Hill, this one, another part of the shooting moor. Can you see the, the grouse button just here? And if we come along here, you can see another one. Walking poles are catching in the ground. There's me home for the night, the crags up there. Actually quite big when you come up to them. Oh, a bit late to call the medic for that, isn't it? Yeah, a bit late. Loads of sheep muck. Loads of sheep over there. Have a climb up on the top and see where we're going to be. Right? Maybe walk around the outside first. Beautiful. I must be the first one to camp at these crags because there's no name for them on the map. But I'll get the map out. We'll climb up on the top. I'll get the map out and we'll have a look. 
Well, here we are at the top of the crags, and it stinks, it really does stink. It's just sheep muck. All it is, is sheep muck. Look, everywhere you look, every step you see, is sheep muck. So, I'll have to find somewhere to bury that's not going to stink. I mean, look at this perfectly flat spot. It absolutely stinks. I mean, wait a Look at it, dear God. God, this stinks. Beautiful spot though. Take the smell out of the house over there. We'll have to have a look on the map, see what all these are. That broad street that was just over there. Fabulous. Let's get away from this sheep. We'll go be sick in a minute. God almighty. It'd be noisy in the night, isn't it, if they all come up there? Fabulous. I must have my tea as well, I'm starving. I'll have a quick shifty round, see where we can camp. Well, I'm just gonna have myself a coffee now before I do anything else. I found this little, this little rock over here. The main, the main crags was over there, but there's still a lot of sheep off, but I found this nice little grassy bit here. That'll do for tonight. So, the food, I'm doing quite well. I've got me, me frying pan and that. I've got me, uh, let's have a look. I've got my green curry noodle kit, I've got my porridge for the morning, a mug shot if I'm hungry, a flapjack bar, a packet of prawns and I've chopped some beans at home so I'll stir fry the, the beans and the prawns and cook the noodles and put the sauce in and uh, put the as I do it. So I've laid everything out, it's a bit of a mess but it's not raining, I'm looking forward to it, good food. For my first couple of coffees, I always have my little tub of coffee, my little tub of coffee, my proper milk, so I'll get some nice strong coffee. And then uh, when that runs out, I've got my caramel lattes, my flat whites and my normal Nescafe. So I prefer the proper proper coffee first, and then I'll go on to the, the camping stuff later. I'm not surprised this crag hasn't got a name on the, on the map. It saves you giving it some abuse. It must be the dirtiest, filthiest crag in the Cheviots. All it is is sheep muck. Everywhere sheep muck. Right, let's get round here and we'll have a look at the map. I'm not proud, I've got the map out. I'll tell you where we are using the map. That house over there is Common Burn House. Obviously, round in that other dip in them trees we saw we saw Broad Struther. Behind there is Great Moor. Then we've got Preston Hill. And I think that's Broad Hope Hill over there. And then we just come back round and that there, Broad Hope Hill, that's uh, Scold Hill and Coldlaw are behind that. I must explore this side more. It's so I broke the noodles up, we'll stick them in first. Soak them in boiling water for seven or eight minutes. So we'll take them off. Sit that over there. Frying pan. The prawns are ready to eat anyway, but I like to give them a cook through. I don't like them raw. Plus they've defrosted coming up the hill, so. I'm just heating this through and then I'll put them on the plate temporary and then I'll make my sauce. Just gonna make the sauce. 
course now. Noodles look alright as well. It's a tasty little dinner. There's the finished dish. Nice stir fry, whole packet of prawns, noodles, beans and the sauce. Hey, hey let's get stuck in. There's my favourite setup again. The small magic carpet. Two guy lines either side. And if you and if you look at it, look, it's rock set solid. I've got my help kit, bunker bag, pillow, rub sleeping bag and the exped mat. And uh, when I've finished the rucksack will go under there. But I'm just sitting over here at the minute, having a couple of brews, just watching the hills. I'm going to explore all these hills over this side, nice and quiet. I fancy that crag up there, that's Watch Hill. And there's a nice high one over there, look, in the distance. I don't know what that is. I'll have to have a look on the map. But uh, that's the setup anyway. It's so simple. It's, it's bomb proof. It really is. I've got a new way of doing these now. I used to put this over the top of the handle and tie the cord around it, but on the last camp, it started to flap because you had uneven edges, it was flapping. So what I've done, I've just used the loops, trapped them with one of the knots, and that keeps it a bit tauter. And that'll stop the, uh, the flapping in the wind. When I was cooking before, you might have wondered the stove was on the grass, but if you look, I haven't burnt the grass at all. I'm just cooking with a, a gentle heater. Just thought I'd show that, as it always leaves no trace, and that includes no burn marks as well. Look at the mist coming in up there now on the hills. Wouldn't have been no good on the high parts of the Cheevich tonight. I've had a lovely walk up the Carey Burn. I've walked up it before a short way, but I've never come up it that far onto the hills like this. Really enjoyed just having a mooch round by these cans and uh, look at that hole. It's like a grave. It's, it's, it's square, isn't it? It's actually dug out square. It's very strange. I've really uncovered something. It's uh, about six foot long. Hmm. Interesting. Just made myself a brew to need some green tea. Just put the lid on, get the flies out. But uh, you can see, if you use the stove on a low heat, you don't have to burn the grass. Plus the fact it's uh, very damp up here anyway. It's at, the grass is actually wet. My trousers are soaked from walking without gaiters. One thing about the Cheviots, it's always wet, windy and cold. <laughs> so I'm just lying in the bivy here. There's my legs, look. I'm just lying in the bivy, just looking out. I just love it. Total solitude and peace and quiet. There's nobody here. It's just a gentle breeze. And so far the sheep have kept away because they're a bit noisy. But uh, let's turn it round. And here's my shelter, look. There's plenty plenty of space under here. I mean, if it, it, it could rain really quite heavily and I'm not gonna get wet. 
I'm waiting for the time I have to pack up in the rain using this setup because uh, you know although there's plenty of space look all my stuff's under here boots look sack and everything clothes crew kit so although there's plenty of space if it was raining in the morning your, your space is so limited i don't know what you'd do interesting to see well, actually i'm almost looking forward to the to the morning after pack up in the rain just to, just to see what it's going to be like because i'm only ever less than an hour from the car so it's not going to kill me to get back wet but i'm really enjoying this just just lying here chilled out i've been watching how to make these swedish torches as well i fancy a go one of them quite interesting the Swedish torch you could there's one I've just watched some uh, American bloke and he just used like a an eight inch long log about six inches in diameter split it into four shaved a bit off the inside held it together with some wire put his uh, fire starting cotton down the middle of it lit it and it burns for quite a while so be actually handy in Harwood to keep the midges away so I might uh, experiment with something like that I'll have to get myself a bush knife so I can split these logs I've got an axe but it's a heavy beast so peaceful right I'll, uh, I'll probably see you in the morning now it's seven o'clock in the morning and I've just woke up I've just put my shirt on there because it's a bit chilly but I slept in my pants last night, absolutely roasting in the night. And it poured, poured with rain. But uh, I only noticed when I, when, I, when I got up for a quick tinkle. But uh, that, that, was a, that was a wet experience. But uh, I think I found the drawbacks of this setup now. It's just eased off the rain now, so I'm going to quickly have my breakfast and my coffee, which I've, which I've made here. But uh, if we look over there, there's a bit of mist, mist on the hills. But uh, and the and the bivvies, the bivy and the tarp have held up perfectly. So obviously I've got protection to here, to there, and the top of the bivy and me it's bone dry, and the wet's just there. Look, you can see the. You can see the line of the water. So the setup actually works in heavy rain. But uh, it's going to be hard to get to get dressed in that with all the wet around me. The grass is soaked and, and it's long grass as well, look. So I've got all my stuff behind me. I've just started opening stuff up to have my breakfast. So I think the drawbacks of this setup, if it was raining now, even my arm would be getting wet now. I don't know how how I would get dressed and ready in the rain, apart from get wet quick and then hopefully dry off as quick as you can. But uh, really enjoyed it. So I'll come back soon. Right, we're all packed up. A little point I'd like to show you. You see how nice and dry it is where the bivvy's been? The top of the bivvy was there. So that's like my head and from there to there was under the tarp so the tarp come down to an angle and all the waters run back under so everything that was here is quite wet like the rucksack and that so a lesson a lesson i've learned i'll have to use a ground sheet under the tarp in case it rains but uh it's leave no trace anyway and if we come over here Leave no trace where the cooking was done as well. Just a little flat spot. I know one thing, it's certainly better with the waterproof trousers on because the wet grass, I'm wet up to the knee, but uh, it doesn't matter in the trousers. I'm just trying to follow these quad tracks to, to save some of the wet. But well, the quad track I followed come down this way anyway, so I wonder what the idea of this, this like metal fence is. It's not to the bottom. Is it to stop animals leaning up against the wall perhaps deer or something so they can't knock the bricks i don't know but 
Here's that building, just a trailer. I saw this on Google Earth, it just looks like it's got some hay inside it. Yeah, it just looks like it's got some hay. <laughs> How many years that's been here? Let's have a look at it. National carriers, that is blooming old. Now this enclosure, I don't know what they're using it for, but there was a load of hairs in there before, but you just can't get the hairs on the film. They're just too fast. By the time you've seen them running off, they're gone. Right, I've come down to the path now. It is clearing up lovely today. There's one of the rivers down there. When it gets a bit rough, this path, I'll film a little bit so it gives you an idea if you want to come and have a look along the, the Carey Burn. Although it's a nice path now, it's not a path for your wet mornings if you've not got waterproofs on, because everything's, uh, you know, over knee high. We'll be coming to some really long ferns in a bit. Just coming through that nice little young oak, broad-leafed woodland again. Just love this type, I said yesterday. But look at this view as you come out. There's the valley we go back. That's incredible. That watch hill looks a bit rocky over there. I don't know which is the best way up to get to the top of that one. What I noticed this morning, one of the crags I fancied camping on, up there, it's got the cows right at the top, look. You can see the cows at the top, so. Not such a good idea on that one. Imagine waking up in your bivvy with them around you. So I can't believe it. Look at that. Didn't spot that coming up, it was, must have been there yesterday. So, somebody's had a barbecue, and then just put a rock over it. I mean, you can see all the grass is burnt. Obviously it wasn't, uh, it looks quite old, so it's this year at some point now. I mean, imagine losing all this. Because of some muppet, honestly. It's a lovely valley, isn't it? In the burn and that. But if you're in the drought hit south, you don't need to worry about us up here. The ground's that boggy underfoot and our rivers are running lovely thanks to the rain on the Cheviots. So it's good and bad. These are some of the rockier bits to traverse along the path. This is the top of the waterfall we filmed yesterday. This is your scree path now along part of the hill coming back. So although the Carey Burn is a lovely walk, if you haven't got uh, good mobility and that, you, you couldn't come on it because this is the walk back. It's, uh, it's treacherous along here. But obviously if you've got good boots on and you're careful, depends what you like and what you're used to. It's just to point out anybody that fancies the waterfall, you can only really come so far unless you're prepared to, to walk on this. I think this is my favourite bit of the, the burn, looking up at the crags. Lovely. Here's some more of that scree slope. This must, must be suffering some movement because uh, there's a lot falling down. Probably in the storms and that, but there must be some movement. Nearing the end of the walk now, last three quarters of a mile or something to go down the valley. I couldn't have spent a day up on the hill today because when I woke up this morning, because the, the uh, wind was quite still, the midges were just starting. There's a few midges along this river walk as well, but nothing, nothing to worry about. So, the Cheviot Hills. I don't have to tell the regulars that walk up here a lot. You've got like Mark Dack, Graham Bassnett, the Georgian is terrible. The Georgian is border terrier. They walk the Cheviots a lot. And on this walk in particular, you've got lush green valley. You've got lovely water. You've got a lovely open moorland top. You've even got like what could be deemed as a, 
rocky mountain walk along the way so the Cheviots really do deliver we're so lucky to live up here the Cheviots really do deliver it all looks like some of the crags are coming out in the sunshine up there now beautiful you can see it look up there what a beautiful morning and we car's still there anyway Right, that's the walk finished. I've just made another coffee back at the car. Before I set off, I've had a really enjoyable walk. The bloke's just parked up next to me there. He's uh, been chatting about, it. does a little bit of camping, but he's just doing night felt running this morning. He's in his 60s as well, so good luck to him. I couldn't do it. The blooming knee's killing me now. The inside of this right knee. I suppose on the twisty paths and carrying the rucksack, but uh, I'm not going to let it stop me. So I'll, I'll see you in the next one.